The fourth and final day along the Norfolk Coast Path National Trail starts off at the village of Kleinex the Sea and follows the sea wall to the expansive Shingle Beach to the north. Roughly three miles of Shingle is followed east, past Granborough Hill and eventually up to the Clifftop Path. The Clifftop Path passes Sheringham Golf Course and top Skelding Hill for stunning coastal views. A gentle descent into Sheringham allows for a lunch stop before the path continues up over Beeston Bump and past several caravan parks to eventually descend down to the pier at Cromer and the official end of this national trail. This is it, my final day's walking along this great national trail begins at the stunning coastal village of Kleinex the Sea. The wind has really picked up today and completely changed direction, with a strong northerly gale coming right off the North Sea, making the going much harder today. But to start with, there is the beautiful Klein Mill to enjoy. The mill dates back to the late 18th or early 19th century depending on sources and has been converted into accommodation. For those exploring the coastal path with a little more spare time, should certainly look at the Norfolk Wildlife Trust Climb Marshes Nature Reserve. The reserve is home to some rare birds such as marsh harrier, bittern and bearded tits, but is also a refuge for thousands of wading birds and waterfowl over the winter period. The National Trail actually heads along the western and northern edge of the nature reserve, allowing for plenty of opportunities to stop along the coast and watch the reeds and marsh for these elusive and endangered species. As you arrive at the sea and vast Shingle Beach, it marks the start of one of the most arduous sections of the entire trail. Just over three miles of shingle awaits with only brief moments of respite, and to be honest, it's tough going and progress is slow. The trail passes a World War II pillbox, partially submerged in the deep shingle bank at Cly Eye, and one of several World War II sites along this stretch. Roughly two miles along the shingle, a small grassy hill is encountered called Little Eye. It seems that along this stretch of coast, the term Eye refers to a small island or hill, as with Blakeney Eye yesterday and Cly Eye earlier today. Little Eye has some substantial World War II remains, including a gun emplacement, pillbox and other remains on the summit. The trail heads off Little Eye to the east with a further mile of shingle to walk, but with another hill interrupting the path. This tiny hill is Granborough Hill and stands about 30 feet above the surrounding beach and marsh and owned by the National Trust. The views back along the shingle are beautiful and to the east you can make out the final stretch of shingle before the trail starts to head up the cliff top path. Due to the ferocious winds and sea spray, I've opted to walk along the landward side of the Shingle Beach, which offers something a little firmer underfoot and a bit more shelter. As the trail starts to leave the Shingle Beach, it passes the World War II remains of Weybourne Camp and now in the grounds of the Muckleborough Collection. A final section of shingle past Weybourne Car Park 
allows for a half mile detour into Weybourne to access local facilities and accommodation if required, otherwise the path heads up a gentle ascent to the clifftop path. The route passes more World War II coastal defences which overlook Weybourne Beach. The surrounding cliffs show the true force of what the crashing waves can do to the crumbling North Norfolk cliffs. As you stride out along the cliff top, take a look inland and you will see the mid 19th century Weybourne Mill, which was last used in 1916 and converted into a house in 1920. Good progress east towards Sheringham is made thanks to solid ground underfoot and the enticing prominence of Skelding Hill with its Coast Watch lookout station promises some amazing views to come. Skelding Hill doesn't disappoint. The views stretch for over 10 miles to the west, with the great spit of Blakeney Point seen stretching into the distance. Heading east, the view really opens up over Sheringham, the largest settlement since Hunstanton some 40 miles back, and offering visitors plenty of facilities and worthy of a leisurely exploration. From this high point, you can also make out the next hill on the other side of town, Beeston Bump. But first, let's take a look down at Sheringham. Sheringham seafront is protected by large concrete structures, otherwise the town would have been lost to the sea decades ago. Facilities are plentiful and easily accessed with some right on the seafront itself. Just as you head along the promenade, you will pass Sheringham Museum, which explores the rich history of the town over the centuries and absolutely worth a little stop. The trail continues past beach huts and begins the 200 foot ascent to the top of Beeston Bump. The start is up a staircase away from the beach followed by a gentle tarmac path which turns into a footpath gently climbing to reach the Ordnance Survey Triangulation Pillar. Beeston Hill, or more commonly known as Beeston Bump, with its 63 metre high summit, offers superb views over Sheringham and west along the coast. On the summit is the base of a World War II observation post and several benches to allow walkers to enjoy this fantastic panorama. East from the summit the view really opens up with a bird's eye view over East and West Runton and in the distance the end of the walk with the church tower marking the seaside town of Cromer. Recent changes in the Norfolk Coast Path route means that the new trail sticks much closer to the cliff tops rather than taking a four mile detour inland over Beeston Regis. This does mean that the walker misses out on a county high point at Beacon Hill, but the new route is just as enjoyable following field edges along the cliffs and the option for refreshments at East Runton. The final stretch into Cromer follows a track through another caravan park before turning back to the A149 main road and quickly turns back to join the clifftop path at the Cromer town sign. As you reach the clifftop path for the final time, there is a view that every walker on this route looks forward to. Cromer Pier can be seen just around the cliff edge and with every step the bustling town moves closer. The Cromer promenade is followed past several gardens to arrive at the pier and the original ending of the Pedder's Way and the Norfolk Coast Path National Trail. Since the development of the England Coast Path, the trail has recently been extended for a further 40 miles to end at the Norfolk Suffolk border at Hopton on Sea. But for me, the original route is absolutely worthwhile in its own right, 
and I may return in the future to continue the remaining coastal sections. For my first national trail, I can say that I've thoroughly enjoyed the route, with its varied landscapes, rich history, wild windswept places and dramatic coastal scenery, it's a route that can be enjoyed again and again.